Hey there everyone and happy Stamptember! Today I'm going to be featuring a project that I made using products from Simon Says Stamps Stamptember collection and I'm really excited about the project that I'm sharing because I actually designed the products that I'm using today. So I'm going to make this gratitude card and what's really fun about it is that I'm going to use a layering stencil set and I'm going to show you how you can take a single layer from the stencil set and add a little pizzazz to your project by switching up, instead of using inks, we're gonna use a medium and create a little bit of extra something special. Okay, so we're gonna start off with using the Floral Whimsy stencil set. It's a layering stencil set that I designed for the Stamp Timber release. There's four pieces and they're pretty easy to work with. They make this pretty pattern here that you see on the packaging. And we're going to work inside of our stamp and stencil mat. I know I've said this before when I've made projects using other layering stencils that this is one of my favorite tools to use when working with layering stencils because it makes lining things up so simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my paper inside of the teal rectangle and then I'm going to line up my stencil inside of the black box. Then I'm going to line up each of my subsequent stencils inside of that same black box so that way each stencil will be lined up perfectly and create the pattern without me having to really figure out where these stencils have to line up. Okay, so I started first by ink blending on top of the leaf layer. And I'm using two different colors of green and I do have all the ink colors that I'm using linked below in the video description and on my blog. So if you're curious about anything, I just did a two-tone variegated look here, nothing too crazy. And then I brought in my first floral layer. So I'm gonna line up my stencil inside of that black box. And then I'm going to use a few different colors of ink to start coloring in these flowers. Now I will shade each of these flowers. So here where I pulled out some melon, then I pulled out a second color called sherbet and I ink blended in the center most areas of the flowers. So that way they create some shading effects. And I did switch blending brushes to a detail blending brush so I get a little bit more control of where I'm putting that shading. Same thing when I switched to purple, I used Morning for the lightest color and then I brought in Galaxy for the darker color and that's going to give my flowers a nice bit of pop. This is a great way to be able to create some unique effects on your layering stencils and give them a little bit more oomph. I'm gonna move on to blush now and I'm going to color in some of these smaller flowers. Now I didn't add any shading to some of the tiniest flowers just because they are so small. But for some of the larger flowers, like here I used lemonade to start and then I brought in citrine for the darker color to add a little bit more shading towards the center. So we're almost done. I've done all of the ink blending at least. We have our pretty pattern, but there is one more layer to this stencil and this creates these little like fairy dots in the background. And to make them stand out and create a little bit more pizzazz to my project, I'm actually going to use some stencil butter. This is champagne stencil butter, and it is beautiful. You can use any paste you want. I just happen to think gold would look really good here. So this champagne gold is gonna look so pretty amongst these flowers. I'll just spread that evenly across my stencil, then lift it off, and you can see we have this really great look now in between the flowers, which gives this background a lot of pizzazz. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this off of my stamp and stencil mat by folding the mat in half and lifting that carefully. And we'll set that aside to dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to work on creating some sentiments for my project. Now, at first I wasn't sure whether I would use thankful or grateful, but in the end I decided thankful. This is a fancy giving thanks hot foil plate that I designed for Simon's Stamp Timber release. There actually are fancy giving thanks dies, and the dies and the foil plates are the exact same size, so you can use the outline layer of the die to cut out the foil plate. So I have some gold hot foil here that I'm going to tape down onto my white glossy cardstock from Simons' Stamp. This is one of the best papers to use for hot foiling and it gives such a good crisp result. So I taped my foil down so it doesn't shift and then I'm gonna lay this on top of my plates which are now completely heated and ready to be transferred. For my glimmer machine, I need these two shim plates so I'm gonna put those on top and then I'll run this through my coordinating die cut machine. Once I did, it leaves me with these two beautiful sentiments that are foiled perfectly on top of our white glossy cardstock, and I can cut these out with the coordinating fancy giving thanks dies. I'm going to tape those dies in place on top of my sentiments using some very, very low tack tape so they don't shift when I cut them out. And like I said, I have both of these cut out here because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use, but I'm just gonna save the grateful since I didn't use it on my project. I'll save that for another card. Okay, I did decide to add a little bit of color to the bottom of my background once the paste was dry, and that was just with that morning color to add a little bit of nice pop of blue down along the bottom. Then I'm going to add my sentiment. 
I put some foam tape on the back and then I'll stick this down along the bottom of the card. I love how that beautiful gold foil matches so nicely with the champagne paste that we added to our background. Now this card is an odd size. It's four and a half by five and three quarters. I wanted to use the full four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. So by adding a, just a little bit of room around the edges on my card base, that gave me the card size that I ended up using. I just wanted to be able to not have to trim my background panel down because I liked how it turned out so much. I am gonna put a strip of Simons and Stamps matte gold cardstock along the bottom of my paper here. I wanted to pull in more of that gold color, so by adding that nice little thin strip along the bottom, that's going to give me that nice little touch. And I'm just trying to line this up so that way it will fit nicely on top of my card and still give me a little bit of a white border around the edges of this piece. I'm going to pop everything up using some Simons and Stamp white foam. This foam is fantastic for using behind your background panels or you can even die cut it. It's one of those foams that actually can be die cut. There are some white foams that can't and this one is perfect for die cutting. So I use this a lot for different projects and especially for backgrounds, they're such a good way to be able to add some stability to your project, especially if you have multiple layers or thinner sheets of paper. So I'm going to use Terrific Tape to attach all this together. This is going on top of my card, which looks so pretty. And we're almost done. I did decide that I wanted to add another strip of color paper along the bottom that matches that purple. And since I don't have a cardstock that truly matched perfectly, I'm just gonna make my own by spreading some of that Galaxy ink onto some white cardstock. And then I also colored the edges of that cardstock too to be able to really make this feel like it was actual sheet of cardstock so you don't see the white core of the paper. And then I just trimmed it down to be the exact same size as my panels that are sitting on top of my card. So we have that thankful greeting and I wanted to kind of complement that greeting with a secondary sentiment. So I pulled out these sentiment strips from Simon and I'm going to trim down one of these here that I really thought matched well with the style of the card and the sentiment. I'm gonna color the edges of this because it's a black sentiment strip and I wanna hide the white core of the paper. So I just used a black marker to do that. And I'll pop this up along the bottom of the card. And then the last finishing touch is I pulled out one of these Tim Holtz buttons. I cut off the little back piece there and I'm just going to glue this down onto my card for a little pop of interest. I think a found object is always fun to be placed on a card as a little sparkle embellishment piece. And I think this one matched really nicely with the project. So as you can see, by adding something simple, just a little bit of paste on one of the layers of our stenciling, that gave our project a really unique and different look. Something that you would not have achieved with ink blending. So I encourage you when you're working with your layering stencils to figure out which layer you think would look cool with some sort of paste effect. If you wanted to use uh, a paste that works well with foils, you could do that too and then add foiling to your project. Lots of different ways that you could do this and I think it really steps up your backgrounds and creates a whole new effect. So I hope you were inspired. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget that this is Stamptember, a month long celebration of stamping hosted by Simon Says Stamp and I will be sharing lots of things over the course of the whole month using products from their newest collaborations, their release, you name it. So I hope you'll stay tuned to my blog and YouTube channel to keep track of everything else that's going on. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will be back soon with more to share, but until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.